but I know you are on the side of unrighteousness and there can never be victory and true success and therefore she says yatra this is her statement the blessing was yatra dharmaha tatra jayaha there where there is dharma goodness righteousness values there alone but there shall be lasting success now we go to we have understood what is goodness is righteousness the right thing you know as i told you when we travel people are very curious about us you know what we do where we go and all that so once i was sitting and uh, in a train and someone told me you know ki what do, what do you do so i said nothing i have no profession you know nothing so she says oh you don't do anything no nothing uh, but something you must be doing na so i said yeah i give talks on the gita oh you are a hindu <laughs> this is a So I said, yeah, you can call me a Hindu. Then she says, okay, can you summarize Hindu dharma in one or two words? Now I'm used to giving lectures for hours, but I this a, and this was quite a few years back. So I said, now how do you say in one or two years words what is? And this lady happened to be a Jain. So I said, okay, can you tell me the entire essence of your dharma in one or two words? She says, yes. I said, what is it? She said, ahimsa. I was stunned. It's true. Isn't it true? The giants lay a lot of emphasis. I said yes. I felt bad, you know. I said, now let me think about <laughs> one or two words. The entire crux of the Sanatan Dharma. And I started thinking. Christianity. What? Give me one or two words which summarize the entire essence of the. I'm not talking about the practice of it. I'm talking about the essence of the original Dharma, original religion. Huh? What is the essence of it? Hmm? It is love and service. Is it true or not? They have a lot of uh, emphasis on love and service. The entire, the essence of Islam in one or two words. I'm not talking about any practice or anything of it. I'm just talking about the essence of the true dharma. What would you say? In one or two words. In the entire Quran, a lot of them they give a lot of emphasis on faith and brotherhood. Is it true or not? Lot of this on faith and brotherhood. Bhai chara, bahut hota hai. So therefore, now, if you want, you can differ in this. Huh? This, this, this is not a hard and fast thing that is there. It's just an opinion. Okay, you can have your own opinion about this. Now, Sanatan Dharma, the Hindu Dharma. What is the essence of it in one or two words? I thought a lot, lot, lot. And what do you have to say, by the way? Anyone? Any ideas? Satya. Hmm. dharma of dharma we want an essence <laughs> right don't whisper say it loud enough for me to hear <laughs> hmm ahimsa tolerance tolerance okay ha huh? shanti Satya me vajayate. None of you are wrong. None of you are wrong at all. Hmm? Karma, okay. Compassion, okay. Righteousness, okay. Huh? Faith, duty, okay. They're not wrong at all. All of you have not given a thing which is not an essential word of the this. After thinking a lot, I hit on one word. Maybe you would disagree. It's okay. The word was Shreya. Shreya means well-being or kalyan. When I'm in the south of India, I'm scared of saying this word kalyan because in South India it means kalyan means marriage. And whether <laughs> marriage say kalyan hota hai ki nahi, wo that I don't know really. <laughs> I am no authority on that subject, <laughs> so I'll leave it. <laughs> But Shreya, well-being. goodness of the other that is the essence now i'll tell you see there might be service seva but in seva if there is no shreyas it can only harm the other person isn't it true in serving someone else you there is a chance that you can harm i'll give you examples for each of this 
you know when we go to people's houses then they all you know they love to show their love through food that's the way you know swami ji you eat and the more you eat the more happy we are but poor me one little and you know gujaratis swami ji mara hathe nahi khadu me tamne nahi and there are 15 members of the family who each one wants to swami ji one more laddu please saints are supposed to make the bhaktas happy so i will be happy if you be unhappy <laughs> you become unhappy eating it's okay but it will make me happy so you eat but what about me think no then if there is no goodness and well being of the other person is seva true seva yes no if you're harming the other person through your service it's not good through your service if you it's for the well being of the other person then it's good seva also service is good even in love where there is no well being of the other person it only harms the other person i'll give you an example you know again in the mahabharat there's this beautiful story a cow had given birth to a calf and krishna bhagwan had taken bhima to see this whole wonderful scene and what happened when the calf was born you all know the cow licks the calf isn't it cleans the calf you know by licking the calf and at that time a cow is normally a very docile and a satvic animal especially the indian desi cows are very very docile they have this big huge horns but they won't harm anyone but when it's given birth to a calf it becomes extremely aggressive no one dares go near it otherwise you go it will attack you now this cow had given birth and it was licking the calf and the newly born calf has very tender skin so it was licking and licking and licking and licking and the calf started bleeding but the cow did not stop licking bhima is telling bhagwan shri krishna what is this what is this calf doing and cow doing he says this is exactly what parents will do to their children in kali yuga they will keep on pampering baby beta oh yes oh boy my dear child anything for you you harm the child but still no doesn't matter when i was small i did not get to eat ice cream every day you eat ice cream every day whether it kills you whether it's good for you you eat don't worry baby baby isn't it true <laughs> love where there is no well being of the other person is not true love do you all agree with me yes true love there is a well being first that's the first thing shreya goodness of the other we are going to talk on happy parenting don't worry there's a lot i have to say oh that's a topic that i <laughs> even if you see uh any other you know faith if you see or anything where there is no well being then it only harms ahimsa also when a doctor takes a knife and cuts the stomach of a patient is he committing any violent act no why because there is well being of the patient isn't it true you don't call it violence but if if there's a knife in anyone else's hand they're cutting the stomach then you call it you know himsa so himsa is no himsa where there is well being of the other person do you agree with me so what is great what is the best it is shreya it is the well being of the other person so that is the essence in fact every scripture of ours whether it is a ramayana whether it is a mahabharata bhagavad gita if you see even in the bhagavad gita arjuna the first question he asks in fact he says yashreyasya nischitan bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadhiman tvam prapannam i surrender to you o lord as a disciple to a guru please teach me what is my shreya protect me and teach me what is my shreya what is good for me have you understood that 
The Gita starts after Bhag Arjuna says this. The Gita would not have started if Arjuna had not asked for this. Yet Shreya Syat, what is my Shreya? Please tell me. So therefore, goodness of others is the very essence of Sanatan Dharma. Okay, as I told you, you can have your own opinion about this. There's no problem about it. I'm just thinking what I felt. And the more and more I see in life, I think this is one of the most beautiful quality that is very much emphasized in the sanatana. From wherever, whichever stage in life you are, your well-being is being talked about. You can be a very crass and a gross person. For you, this is good. For someone else, something else is good. You understand? It's like sugar is good for someone, but it's not good for a diabetic patient. You understand? But there is good health is good for everyone, right? <laughs> sugar may be good for someone, not good for someone, but good health is good for everyone. So that, that is called Shreyas and the other is called Nishreyas. Shreyas is specific for one person. Nishreyas is good of all for all times to come. That is called good health is good for all, every time, any time, all the time. Do you agree with me? So that is called Nishreyas and that is the essence of Dharma. There is a beautiful definition of Dharma given. Remember this, yataha abhyudaya nishreyasa siddhihi. Please don't feel allergic towards our Sanskrit words because it's nothing but our Gujarati and Hindi and all. Gurudev always used to say, Gujarati mispronounced is called Sanskrit. Okay? <laughs> and we get all dumb and Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Gujarati is not a thodu It's a little bit. It's a little bit. It's a so, there where there is abhyudaya, abhyudaya means prosperity. And nishreyasa, well-being, there is dharma. So, dharma has these two roles to play. What? And people have this feeling that, you know, India became poor because of our dharma. <laughs> you, Rama. India was truly prosperous, one of the most prosperous countries, not one of the most prosperous country in the whole world when dharma was at its peak over there. You understand? It's only when we start following dharma that a lot of this. So, abhyudaya and nishreyasa, when they go together, outer prosperity and inner unfoldment, both should always go hand in hand and that is where dharma lies. Have you understood? Now, we are going to come to a few questions and think. In this world, you can have three types of buddhi, thinking, or mental makeups. And you can have permutation combinations of these. Most of us have permutation combinations of these. One is called shutta buddhi, a good heart. This is your inner mental makeup. Shuddha buddhi, a good heart. The other is called Tikshna buddhi or a smart intellect. And the third is called Sukshma buddhi or a subtle intellect. Are you with me so far? Shuddha buddhi. Tikshna buddhi, sukshma buddhi. Now, when a person only has shuddha buddhi, a pure heart, normally people refer to him as bechara bhala admi. <laughs> Poor, good fellow. <laughs> when they, they add the word, you know, in the Tamil they have this wonderful word called pavam. No Tamilians around? Isn't it? Pavam. Poor fellow. Good fellow. He is a very good poor fellow. And no one has respect for this guy. Is it true or not? You can love this guy, but ah, bicharo, bodayashi, bodz bhalo manas, bhagwan no pana. And we think he's a bicharo manas, isn't it? He's a poor fellow. We don't respect him. Right? You can love that man, but you won't respect that person. The second is smart, and that is the guy who takes away all the respect of everyone. Right or wrong? Voila. So 
કેવું પડે હા આપણે If you have only smartness, now we talked about a person who had only goodness, okay? He is considered as bicharo. If you have only smartness, then what happens? Devoid of goodness. Only smartness, what happens? You know, there was a guy, I heard of a story, very amazing. A man sold Eiffel Tower twice. You heard of that? Yeah, Eiffel Tower belongs to the government of... France, the place is all, it's a national monument. And he goes and sells a national monument. How can you sell? But he did it. He got away with it. Second time he got caught. He wanted to do it the third time, but <laughs> he says it's working very well, you know. The people are and the first man did not tell, you know, he knew he got fooled. He didn't say it because everyone would think he's a fool, so he kept quiet. So he got away with it the second time. <laughs> Pretty smart guy. Do you agree with me? And I tell you, much as you don't bond, you know it's wrong, you still admire the guy. What brains, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the guy, he goes and sells this. How does he manage to do that, you? Okay. Then you have sukshma buddhi. What is sukshma buddhi? A subtle intellect. What is the meaning of subtle? We say these words, but we must... Know it very clearly what it means. A subtle intellect means the ability to know, recognize, understand in all its depth a thing, a subject or a topic absolutely, totally, clearly. To be able to see it in its essence in one second like that, it's a very penetrating type of thinking which sees an essence of a subject immediately. This sort of an ability of the intellect is called sukshma buddhi or subtle thinking. Are you with me? It's a mind which is tuned up. All great discoveries are made by a sukshma buddhi. Have you understood that? You see the essence of a thing. Like Newton sat under the apple tree and the, what? The apple fell on his head. And when it did this, It was his sukshma buddhi which made him discover. Have you understood? He saw the truth right there. Right. I see it. I understand the significance of it. I know this is what it means. If you and I were sitting over there, what would we have done? <laughs> First of all, if you would have cursed, you know, early morning, what happened? Yeah. Or if you were hungry enough, you said, anyway, it's fallen. Now let me. But this is this ability to be able to see the essence of a thing, to be penetrating deep and understand it in a second. This is called what? But there are some people who just, they get in one subject, they get everything very much. But in some subject, they never get the hang of it, the knack of it. They, it's like they, they are blank. Some people, you know, they come to Vedanta and they don't understand a word of it. But you go to another field, they are fantastic at it. So therefore, this is called what? To be able to see the truth as it is, is called sukshma buddhi. Okay? Now, I am going to ask you a question. What do you want your children to be? Good or smart? Hmm? Both. That's a common answer everyone gives. But the most contradictory thing about this whole thing is that you want your children to be good to you and smart with others. Is it true or not? <laughs> Supposing they act smart with you. <laughs> Bolo. What do you say? There is smartness, there is nature. And I tell you, it's so interesting. You fall in love. Normally, people fall in love because of smartness these days more than others. Other time. Is it true or not? Oh, she is so smart. She is smashing. Ah, very good. <laughs> Wonderful. So you fall in love because of smartness and you see all the divorces that happen. You divorce because of smartness. Is it true or not? <laughs> Bolo. You just think about this. Please think about this. 
you fall in love because you have a value for smartness for your smartness is everything it is your value for smartness that is making you fall in love with smartness and so smartness is something that you can admire but you can't live with have you understood that will you please remember this and yet what are we all impressed by bolo we know we can't live with it and that is why it's so common it so happens you fall in love and that time you say oh she is so smart or he is so smart he is so smart smart so smart then you start living with each other then what happens every day morning that smart <laughs> and he gets irritated and she gets it oh <laughs> isn't it we never understand all these things we is bas now we going to think a lot more about this <clears throat> supposing smartness smartness is it's not important it's not that it's unimportant in life okay please smartness i don't mean only physical smartness you know in a, a, a smartness is the ability to make material prosperity or talent you know ability to be you know efficiency a lot of all these things come into smartness you know, the ability to uh, what do you say uh, set things you know in order understand the pulse of you know the person who can understand the pulse of the market that's a very smart thing isn't it others don't understand the this guy goes and our gujus <laughs> you one this isn't it and they don't really need a lot of education nowadays simply i'm not saying don't get educated but uh, all degrees and degrees big management degrees and top of this and all if you see all top management gurus all over the world they have never taken a management degree is it a fact or not bolo you find out does deepak chopra have a management degree yes or no no you see all top management course they don't have anyway doesn't matter you go and get your management degree <laughs> people who have so much you know bombay stock exchange at one time this is a person so many young fellows coming with all sorts of big degrees from here there everywhere and they would go and learn from a man who used to wear dhoti and topi and this and had no education nothing and these people would sit at his feet and listen to his words like a guru talking why he didn't need these degrees he needed he could know the pulse of the market just like so smartness is important it's required it's a good thing it's not bad by itself but what is its role in your life if it is a tool in the hands of goodness it will only bless you all your life will you remember this it's a very very important thing that i'm speaking if smartness is a tool in the hands of goodness it will only bless you in your life it will take you ahead it will give you material prosperity it will help you to unfold within and everything is possible but if the other the opposite takes place believe me it can only harm if smartness becomes a thing in power and it uses goodness then goodness will be exploited it will be a lot of things can happen which are very very bad and at the end of it no good can come out of it now think in your own life what rules goodness or smartness think don't give me an answer i don't need to know <laughs> you think for yourself what is it that rules in your life your individual life you have smartness in you we have goodness in us also what is it that prompts our actions what is it that makes us you know guides our life is it smartness or is it goodness ask yourself this question smartness is so manipulative that it comes many times in the garb of goodness have you understood that it's a very manipulative thing 
It makes the person feel nice. By one or two small little gestures of goodness, makes the person feel that he is very, very good. When he's actually what? One. <laughs> it is only smartness which really makes him feel very good. So therefore, <laughs> we have to be very careful. Smartness is something that you should keep as a what? Something to be used. Use it and put it away. When it's not required, switch off the mobile. <laughs> 24 hours if you're stuck with smartness, and I tell you, it will spoil all personal relations. Is it true or not? It will be an obstacle in the path of progress. Smartness is extremely manipulative. It wants its, and it will always try to dominate over goodness. It will always be in a struggle to be in a seat of power in your life. Many times it succeeds. And many times it rules so completely it's like a dictator. And doesn't even allow goodness to flower at all. Because we know there is goodness in the heart of every one of us, right? And yet, when smartness...